Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and in this video we're going to try and fix this Joy-Con from the Nintendo Switch. So this is a right hand Joy-Con, the one with the, you know, the A and the B etc. Now apparently the thing that's wrong with this is that it syncs up fine. Look here, when connected to the Switch it syncs physically but couldn't get any of the buttons to work though. So basically that's a really interesting fault. So it syncs up but nothing's happening. And I've never seen that before, so I'm really curious to find out what's wrong with this. What I'm thinking straight away, I haven't put a multimeter near this yet, I haven't done any testing with this at all. But what I'm thinking is, all of the buttons might have a ground connected to them. So for example, when we press this button here, obviously it's just connecting two little bits together inside here. You know, like two little carbon tracks, it's just the... Uh, there's a little metal plate in here that shorts across them and it completes the circuit on that. So I'm thinking maybe each button has a ground that they're all in common with. So for example, the ground of this is the same with the ground of that, etc. And if none of them work, I'm wondering maybe if the ground, the main ground or something is damaged. As I say, that's only sort of what I'm thinking initially. It probably will turn out to be a chip or something like that. It might not even be repairable. But either way, it's going to be interesting. Now, I've got no way of testing it like this, so I'm going to have to take apart a working Joy-Con. This is the right-hand one. And then I'm going to put this in that one just to verify that it's not working. So let's get a Joy-Con, pop this in it, and see what's happening. Okay, so this is a good motherboard here. As you can see, it's a, it's a different colour, but it pretty much looks identical as far as the chips and stuff are concerned. Well, let's put this in here and see what's happening. Okay, so I've got the bad motherboard in the good Joy-Con, so let's see now. Right, okay, so it syncs up there, it says paired. Okay, so did you see that? It's, it's a red one. So if you have a look there, you can see it's a red one there. So now let's see, we can move it around there. Okay, will that work there? Hold on now. Let's go down to the buttons. Right, okay, well they're all working. Well, I don't know about the side ones yet. Yeah, it's low battery just, just because this switch hasn't been used in a while. Right, well they all appear to be working. Do you know what? I don't know what could have been wrong with that, which is slightly annoying. I mean, it's working fine now, so there's nothing I can do. I can't fault find it anymore, but it would have been nice to sort of guess what the problem is. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that whatever connects up all the grounds on here was the thing that went faulty on it, but what that is, I don't know. Will it happen again? I don't know. I mean, if it does, fantastic. I can do the video, but for this, at this moment in time, it's all uh, it's all working. It's all working okay. Right. What I'm going to do is because obviously that last part of the video was just <laughs> installing a working motherboard into a working Joy-Con. Uh, let's try and do this one here. So this basically says on this one again. This is from Mike from One Up Gaming, and it basically says can't remember the main fault, but the latch has come off the rail connector. So this Joy-Con here is nearly complete actually. But if you have a look, oops. Right, so basically we have the uh, this latch here, you see, should go in there. So it looks like the kind of clip that folds down has gone. So let's pop a battery in this one, and let's see if we can get this one to work. Because this one here is just going to do the sink and the light. So let's leave that disconnected, then we'll know whether that's the only fault on it. So let's pop the battery in from this one here. So I believe it's the bottom connector here that does all the syncing up with the pins. I think this one is just for the lights and also the sync button. You can see now the corrosion on there. So gently I'm just going to rub the fiberglass pen 
in line with it. Yeah, there it's already cleaning up. You know that that will do. I'm going to leave it at that. Well, let that dry off now and see if that makes a difference. Right, well, okay, you see those pins there? They're also corroded. There we go, I can hear it working. Look. Right, so that rail is working. Right, okay, uh, that's good. Now let's try to put the lighting rail back in it. It's starting to make progress now, you see. Right, so on this one, it's not making any. Uh, any connection at all. Oh, there you go, lights on, look, when I put pressure on it, look at that. Right, okay, uh, that's good. Let's strip this down more, see it's still on now, it's gone off. So obviously, it, I need to, do you know what, I need to find out the name, I think they're called a, a ZIF connector, a zero inforce, oh I'm not sure. Zero Insertion Force Connector, ZIF. I wonder, is that a ZIF connector? I'm going to Google it, because this must be a common problem when the, the clip, you know, the, the clamp falls off it. So, for example, you can see this one here on the good Joy-Con. It's this little thing here. So when this is open, you put the cable in, and then basically you clamp this down to force the pins to crush onto the ribbon cable. I'm going to Google if there's a nice, easy fix. I'm sort of thinking about maybe a tiny bit of plastic, and then putting a bit of tape on it or a bit of plastic and then hot glue gun or maybe even just hot glue gun while holding it down but somebody else might have a much better solution so there's no point in me trying to reinvent the wheel if there's already a good fix out there so let me get back to this in a little while right good old youtube i uh typed it into google and this particular video came up here easy ribbon cable connector fix comma repair by austin underscore semiconductor Using some plastic, you just cut out the little bit that you need, and then he kind of uh, put a little bend on it to make it slightly more, I suppose, to put a little bit more pressure on it. So cutting it there and then a little bit down here, so it's got a bit of give, and just shoves it into place. And then I'm going to put a bit of Captain tape over it. But you never know, it might be oh, it might be okay. It's worth a go. I wonder, can I force that under there or not? No, I don't think that's going to go in on this one. No. But what I could do is, I could bend it round on itself, so it's like a spring, put it on there and then put captain tape on, so then it's putting pressure on those pins. I was hoping to force this underneath, but it's not going and I don't want to mess with those pins too much. Yeah, this uh, plastic's too thick. I'm not going to have any other thinner plastic, I don't think. So it's time to give up on trying to bodge up this connector here. Whatever I do, it's just not working. So maybe the technique works for larger connectors, but on this smaller one here, 
nothing's happening. And the problem is, when I put it in, I need so much pressure to get all the buttons to work. So I can get the lights to work very easily and the sync button, but when it comes to the SL and SR button, I really have to squeeze it down. In fact, the SR button I can get to work quite consistently, but the SL button, I need to squeeze it with so much force. There's no way that a hot glue gun or any bit of plastic and captain tape is going to have the same force as me squeezing it as hard as possible. So what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to try and do, I have got a water damaged little board here, and you can see it's the same, uh, it's from the same Joy-Con, and this one has got the little black flap. So I'm going to zoom in using the macro feature on the camera, I'm going to try to take this one off, and I'm going to try to put it on here. Now that's a lot easier said than done because I believe there's tiny little holes in here that the contacts have to go through. Also, I haven't got a microscope still, still haven't got one. But if I can swap this one over to here, then this might provide enough force in order to make it work again. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. Okay, so let's try and remove this one here. These things snap quite easily when you don't want them to, but now that I want to pull it out, oh there we go, there we go, so it comes off that way, comes off this way. Uh, is that side going to come off or not? Okay, that way, so now this one needs to go on this way, and it's going to have to go on over. The, uh, the certain contacts that it's going to have to go over. Basically in here there's tiny little holes and uh, there's some kind of like cutouts at the bottom but there's also holes going right the way through it. There you go. And you've got to get some of the pins through the holes and that was, that's what makes it really hard. I'm going to win. I'll keep at it but I don't think I'm going to win on this one. Right, okay, look, it looks like it's game over. Basically, I was looking at the pins and they looked a little bit bent and stuff because remember, this has had a lot of abuse now with me shoving in the plastic and putting captain tape and peeling it on and off. And I'll straighten them up and look, they've snapped from this bit here and they've snapped on the crack bit. So now it looks like that is game over because even if I do manage to get this on, it's not going to put the pressure down, is it? Right, okay, time to call it a day on this. I cannot get this to work. I ruined that connector completely now. The pins have fallen out of it. And as well now, this ribbon cable down at the bottom is slightly damaged on the very edge. So it's no longer registering that it's connected to the Nintendo Switch. So you can see it is still working. It's working wirelessly. You can see there, hold on. There you go, take a picture. But it's not actually doing what it's supposed to do. Right now it should be registered that it's on the Nintendo Switch. And if you have a look, it's not, it's showing that it's uh, wireless. So as soon as that battery goes flat, it's not gonna work anymore. So really this Joy-Con is only good for spares or repairs. So have I learned anything from this video? Yes, I have. I've learned that if those little connectors, you know, those ZIF connectors or whatever they're called, if they're snapped off, it is definitely not an easy fix when it comes to small ones like this. Maybe on other ones, shoving a bit of plastic in might work, but I spent ages on this and I could not get it to work. So there's no way glue gun, or a captain tape or anything would work on the particular one that I was working on. I think there's too much force needed to, to hold it down. Um, so yeah, still, still a learning curve, but unfortunately, slightly boring video and also not a successful outcome as well. So apologies for that. But if you've got any enjoyment from it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.